Before taking you to the execution ground, you will first see a few scenes of China. While these scenes pass in review, I will give a few highlights on China's struggle with the drug menace. Let us turn back the pages of history and investigate the origin of opium and how China became a mesh in its coils. Mesopotamia was the original home of opium. During the seventh century, it was carried by Arabs to China. Not until opium importation on a large scale in the second half of the 18th century did it present a serious problem to the Chinese government. Through the activities of foreign traders, traffic in opium increased so rapidly that China was driven to test. This brought on a war known as the Opium War. China was defeated and compelled to pay a large indemnity. From 1860 to the present, China has been drug-ridden, despite her heroic efforts to uproot her national vice. Among its population of 400 million, it is estimated that China has 15 million drug addicts. There have been numerous international drug conferences, particularly the one held under the League of Nations at Geneva. China laid her drug problem before these committees for a solution. She now has taken a firm hand within her own boundaries to blot out an evil that has undermined the morale of her citizenry. General Chiang Kai-shek issued orders to execute all Chinese found guilty of drug addiction after January 1st, 1937. Hundreds of empty caskets were placed on the streets as a way to be cured or die. It is the drastic means employed by a rising nation to blot out a scourge that has slowly been eating into the very heart of China for centuries. From now on, be prepared to witness some startling scenes. This is the courtyard of the Justice Building, where clerks of the court are busily engaged in preparing the execution formalities. Locked in this police van are the condemned narcotic victims being driven to their death. Here we are at the execution field, where we see a convicted narcotic dealer cringing before armed guards, while sober-faced judges sign his death papers. These papers are cast upon the ground before the prisoner as he is executed. A Chinese priest bestows upon the condemned man his blessing and prepares the soul for a happy transit to its celestial home. Quickly and in a business-like manner, the guards wheel the prisoner away from the execution judge's table and walk him to the center of the field. One execution is followed by another in quick succession. Bound and kneeling, he awaits death. A tragic end and indeed a tremendous price to pay for the pleasure of opium. This prisoner does not accept his fate in the stoic manner of his predecessors. One shot and another drug addict passes on to eternity. Chinese doctors examine the executed men and pronounce them dead. The bodies are left to the care of relatives and friends. The young man on the right adheres to the time custom of placing food beside the deceased to provide sustenance for the soul during its journey to its heavenly home. His pipe dreams are over. His debt to society has been paid. This is Potter's Field, where Chinese paupers are buried in mound graves on the side of a hill. Thus ends a day of execution, and those who refused to obey a law intended to further their own welfare paid the supreme penalty for the folly of their ignorance.